Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, and let's talk horror. Today, I am so pleased to announce some of my good friends from the South, Ohio, just a little bit south of me. I got uh, Derek Talib and Jose Byers. How are you guys doing today, man? Good. We're doing good, good, Ken. Good. Thanks for having man? us. Oh, no, man. This is such an honor. These guys are the co-founders and co-owners of the, uh, uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I-71 Productions, I-71 Movies. Um, these guys have been called the next big thing in Ohio. And this is something I'm very excited about. Um, they have one film right now that you guys could check out. That film is called Dark Iris. And then they have four films right now that are in pre-production, which are Wicked Breed, St. Gabriel, Wet, and Kingdom of Darkness. So there's a lot going on here. And to check these guys out, I have all their links down here in the description. So you could check out not only the website, but their social medias and kind of get caught up on what's going on. Uh, so let's start with you, Derek. What's a little bit you can tell us about uh, I-71 for the people that don't know yet? Um, basically, it, it got together when uh, Jose and I just kind of were kicking things around, uh, working out. And I found out he was an actor. And I told him a story that I had written a long time ago called uh, St. Gabriel. And he said, that sounds like a good story. And we decided, well, you know, we should, let's try and make it. And in the process of, you know, deciding what we're going to do, um, I wrote it and we got ready to produce it. And I 71 movies was born because we started working with people in Cleveland, Columbus, and Cincinnati. And what connected us is I 71. Mm -hmm. So we, i.e., I 71 movies. And our emblem is basically looking like the state of Ohio, but all but it looks like the uh, the road sign for I 71. Mm -hmm. And yeah, <clears throat> we just Started do, we started doing St. Gabriel, and in the midst of doing St. Gabriel, we uh, got cast in Captain America, the Winter Soldier. And we were up there on different uh, days. Jose got cast first, and uh, he was, I think he was a strike force agent, and, mm -hmm. and I was a shield agent. And we worked with all the main stars as preferred extras. So He's, we got to talk to all of them. And they gave us a lot of advice. The Russo brothers gave us advice. And they were very forthcoming with what we should do. And one thing that was said was, would you rather be the actor that's waiting for somebody to call you? Or would you rather be the person that's calling the actor and owning your own production company? Right. We said, oh, we'd rather be the uh, production company. He goes, right. So that's what we started doing. So we You're right. You want to be the one all. making the call, not waiting for the call. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly right. Because we, we went to the uh, audition for Captain America Winter Soldier. And I got to tell this funny story because it, it, it's hilarious. Because um, this is Derek's and I first, you know, uh, shot at a, a, a real like movie, you know, Hollywood movie. Yeah. So they, they were supposed to hold it in uh, this, I, I don't know, it was like a convention center type thing, but it ended up getting moved to the uh, public library in Cleveland. And they, they moved it last minute. So Derek and I hitched, this, <laughs> hitched a ride from a guy who was going to the same audition we were. And just Derek was like, if you want to know where it is, you're going to give us a ride there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so we jumped in. We didn't even know this guy. We just met him in a parking garage. So we jumped in this right. truck and we drove to the, the library, the Metro Library. What we did not know was that there was a, a line had already formed at the library that had already yeah. wrapped around the building. Derek and I went in and said, where are, the, where are they holding the auditions? They said, oh, they're down there, down the hall, down the, down the stairs. So we went in. <laughs> there was 20 people in front of us. And, you know, I hope they're not mad at us. But we just jumped the line. We didn't know. We had yeah, no because, idea. But when we got there, <laughs> when we showed up there, there were 5,000 people there already. That And this line went around the building a couple times. So Zan <laughs> and I, since we didn't know any better, we go, well, yeah. shit. We just walk up the stairs into the library yeah. and go, hey, where's the auditions at? And they go, in this room? We go, All right. We went in the room and just sat down. And we didn't realize we had cut the line, really. <laughs> we just walked up there. And we got to audition, like, right away. <laughs> yeah. We were they, almost that's hilarious. In, oh, dude. Yeah. Ken, we were almost in, um, uh, God, what was the one that they did in Detroit? They did a... Uh, uh, Batman vs. Superman. Batman vs. Superman. Versus Superman. Yeah. And this yeah. time we, we couldn't cut lines, so we had to stay in line for a long ass time. Yeah. But what was funny was we got finally get in the building, 
and the lady that was a casting director for um, Captain America Captain Winter America. Soldier for uh, Warner Brothers goes, hey, Derek and Jose, what are you guys doing here? And we're like, what? She goes, we'll get you guys suited up. We ain't worried about it. Go ahead and get your headshots. And right. But we couldn't do it because we had we were doing, uh, was it Dark Iris or St. Gabriel at the time? St. Gabriel, first we're, time. We are doing the first one yeah. at St. Gabriel. And we, we, we our schedules wouldn't align to actually do yeah. uh, Batman versus Superman. But it yes, was cool because she knew who we were since we walked in the door. Right. So, so to awesome, answer your man. question, long story short, uh, I-71 movies uh, became together because we learned uh, a lot of different uh, piece, pieces and parts by being on this Hollywood set. And uh, like Derek said, the Russo brothers asked us, you know, uh, would you rather just be the one auditioning all the time or be the one in charge holding the audition? So it made it made sense to us. That's awesome, man. And I hope that one of those people are watching this like, those are those motherfuckers that got right in the line. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I'd find him eventually. Son oh, of a bitch. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's, it's one of those things where you just kind of slide out like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> was so yeah, funny. yeah, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome, man, but like I said, everybody, I do have their links down here in the description. So check these yeah. guys out. Make sure you are following them on social media. Jump on the train early because the train is going to be moving fast, especially once something we were talking about. And I don't want to get too spoilery here, but wet is a very good idea. And I love what these guys were telling me about it. And I could be genuine and tell you that because this is something I've never it's written on a book based. Who wrote the book? Uh, Brian um, Bowman. Mm -hmm. Brian Bowman. So Brian wet Bowman, by yeah. Brian Bowman. If you want to research that a little bit, yep. the idea is genius. I love what these guys have been telling me. It's something I'm very excited about. So I'm probably going to be hitting these guys' DMs and bothering the shit out of them trying to figure out what's going on with this. So, um, I'm, I'm not Perfect. too far away from you, man. I might hit I-75 to 71 and come down there and start knocking on the door, you know? Yeah, come, hang come out, on down. Man. Hang yeah, out. We'll come hang out. Yeah, absolutely. Real. Yeah, don't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> All right, but gentlemen uh, jose derek i appreciate you guys coming on so much and i do want to get into the reason why we're here it's going to be a little different because we have both of you here so i'm going to bounce the questions back and forth a little bit i started with you last time derek so i'm going to start with you jose we're going to talk about the first horror movie you watched and how it affected you and your first horror oh, movie man. jose was the tourist trap the tourist trap. And, um, and, you know, you and I took, there you go. There it is. <laughs> Mr. There Slauson's is. Oasis, the man. Slauson. I love man, it. <laughs> I, I tell you what, and, and, you know, I was surprised Derek, uh, he'd never seen this film because it was done in like the 70s. I think it was like 70, what, 75, oh, 76, man, something like that. described it, it, yeah. it sounded really cool. I think I did see it. Maybe so you, you did see it. You talking about them being, being uh, made into wax figures and stuff? Uh, mannequins. I was like, mannequins. Yeah. yeah, I was like, yeah. That does sound familiar. And when you said you saw the uh, the night owl, yeah, Fritz on um, Fritz night owl. Yeah, yeah I said, yeah. Shit. Oh, I'm gonna so, see this shit. So, <laughs> well, the so thing about I, this movie that not a lot of people realize is Tourist yeah. Trap is rated PG. So they could show this movie on Saturday afternoon TV, what? and that's what really got the cult following with this movie because when yeah. it first came out, it kind of bombed in the box office because nobody right. wants to see a PG horror film in the, in the late seventies, right. you know? Right, right. But right. then. This starts playing on afternoon TV and people are seeing like, oh man, this is fucking scary. You don't have to be bloody and gory to be no, absolutely right. devastating and absolutely terrifying. And to me, that's what this movie is. This movie is right. a psychological horror, but it mm -hmm. has a slasher element to it too. But it's not that up in your face slasher. This is uh -uh. that kind of low key slasher film that came out before the big slasher craze of Halloween, Friday the 13th, mm -hmm. Texas Chainsaw. Mm -hmm. uh, this is kind of more that subtle slasher that's still very psychological at the same time. So, right, right. this like it would, a movie it would I'm very excited to talk with you about. It, it, would, it, it, it was ahead of its time, and it would be super if somebody redid it. Like you know, maybe down the road we could redo it because of, of you know um, the position that we're in now. But the telekinesis at, at that time, like I was a kid, like I had no idea what that was. So this guy could move stuff with his just by looking at it, and then. He would uh, he owned this gas station and he would you know have people's cars break down on purpose so he could send them up to his house so he's like working on their car but you, you know really what he's doing is he's taking a tunnel underground and going to the house and killing these people and turning them into mannequins and I was like what is this 
What is this? When I talk, he talks like this when yeah, he's in yeah. the outfit. Like, it's so oh, awesome. Man. Oh, man. I'm going to bounce some questions back to you here in a second, yeah. Jose. But before yeah, no, I do, good. my friend Derek, I would like to know what started you in the horror genre? Uh, the first one that I saw, and this was as a child, mind you, was The Exorcist. Oh, I saw The Exorcist. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. I have oh, talked God. about it on here before, man. Uh, before you get started, Derek, this yeah. movie has a stigma with me. And the reason why my family owned a video store growing up. Okay. And I could rent movies whenever I wanted. And I had a very young parents. My grandparents essentially were raising my parents and me at the same time. And we rented The Exorcist. And mm. it's the mm. only movie that god rest my mom's soul but it's the only movie that she ever shut off and told me i couldn't watch it's the only one and she shut it off she said we're not watching this so i was like okay mom and i was like fuck that i'm watching this and yeah. i watched it and i was like i didn't uh, have to watch that <laughs> you know, I was dude that was fucking scary man it was, it was. how old were you derek the first time you had seen the exorcist oh god i don't know i, I remember that my because my dad didn't give a shit you know my dad was the one that was raising me so I mean, I, I saw all the movies I shouldn't be seeing as a young kid. I mean, so I don't see I. dirty hair. I mean, <laughs> my, my dad didn't give a shit when I saw it. <laughs> like, okay, I mean, I'd be a young kid watching titties on the screen. I'd be like, okay, all right. All right. <laughs> yep. I, yep. I, I yep. like those. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> Dude, I, 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 I can get behind that. Yeah, yeah. He said, I think we don't got watch I, Thundercats no more, Dad. We can watch. Yeah, oh my God, Thundercats! Yeah, <laughs> I think Derek and I were in that at that age, and, and maybe you two can. But television turned off at a certain time when you I was got the bars. Up. Yeah, you got the bars. You got yeah. the bars, and and like Derek was saying, I watched I watched The Exorcist too, um, and I shouldn't have uh, when I was a kid because we had a, a cheater box, what I call a cheater box, which we got all the premium cable channels are like, you know, for free, you know, cause we yeah. had this box and that movie scared me to death. And I, I shouldn't have watched, it. I was supposed to be in the bed and I snuck out of my room and watched it. And dude, it, I, I can't watch it to this day. It just, it freaked me out mm -hmm. too bad. Well, what cracks, what was, when you look at it, look back at the exorcist, you think of all the stuff they had Linda Blair doing mm -hmm. as, as a child, the acting they had her do with the makeup and the stuff she was saying, <laughs> the, the crucifix and, they, and then you see later on, they cut stuff out. She came down the stairs backwards, and they'd see it yep. to you till later. Well, I had to get the director's cut just for that oh, reason, man. God. Yes! That was vile. And you, I mean, you're looking at that movie going, somebody thought of this. Right. Mm -hmm. And went through it. And then the uh, whole priest thing. And, well, and when she started and talking like his mom. the extras, they actually took Linda Blair, this young girl, and the, is the director, one of the producers, was like, do you know what masturbation is? And it was asking her all these questions that you know would never fucking fly today. <laughs> no man. right way. Not even close. No and it shouldn't. You know, you shouldn't be no, asking right. an 11, 12 year old girl that kind of right. stuff. Right. But right. they had right. the crucifixing. That's where my mom shut it off, by the way. The crucifixing. I was like, what's this? Yeah. Like, That's, yeah. That's, That's what when it was time to go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> my dad was like, uh, yeah, you should have really shown yeah. this. Don't repeat this <laughs> at school. Yeah. So for those those scenes, didn't didn't she have a stunt double that was like in her twenties that did those those sexual for scenes? For some of the scenes, but like for the scene the where scenes. she's like rocking in the bed, that yeah. was her. Yeah. And like she oh, got wow. really hurt during that scene because it was yeah. malfunctioning. Oh like, wow! I would strongly recommend if you guys get the chance to pick up this director's cut and watch some of his commentary <laughs> and deleted oh. scenes. Jose's like, fuck it, I'll take your word. Now I'm gonna watch it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, nah, man, I can't do that anymore, man. I, that messed me up, man. <laughs> so I get it. Mm -mm, so, so I want to bounce back to you real quick, Jose. Go back to Mr. Yeah. Slauson for a second. Sure. Which scene from Tourist Trap affected you the most? Okay. Uh, it's the scene where he's uh, uh, in the living room and he's he's dressed up. He has a wig on. He look, He looks like a big girl. And mm -hmm. as his parents are in a rocking chair and they're rocking back and forth and they're, they're mannequins already. And he's playing with this doll and he has that deep voice like, oh, you're so pretty and blah, blah, blah. And then you see those two, uh, the guy and the girl run past the other uh, room and he stops and, and he's not even facing the doorway. He's, he's facing his parents are watching TV and he's holding this doll and they run past and he stops like he already knows that they're there and he turns around real slow. Dude, I'm done. 
I'm done. <laughs> I'm like, there's no uh, way. Well, like you said, uh, the telekinesis, I mean, the telekinesis right. makes itself known within the first 10 minutes of this movie, even yes, though you does. don't know what it's doing yet. Right. You know, right, from the right. thing we talked about with Woody's death, like something we'll bring up here in a little yeah. bit, but also with like when they get back to the Jeep, how the headlights are exploding and it won't yeah. start. And, like the telekinesis makes itself known all throughout the movie and it's brilliantly yeah. placed to where you don't know what's going on yet, but you know something heavy is happening. Mm-hmm. Right. So, and you uh, don't, you don't know. <laughs> no, go ahead. <laughs> no, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I'm going to bounce back to you real quick, Derek. Yeah. We're talking about the exorcist. When someone brings up the exorcist, what is the first thing that pops into your head? The her in the bed when she turns into uh, uh, the priest's mother and starts uh, speaking to him in her voice. Yeah. And, and which, of course, when she turns her head all the way around, that, that that's kind of freaky. And when the priest first approaches the house, how they shot that was so Beautiful. ahead of its time. Mm-hmm. In the in the 70s, you, you get your, like, like you guys are talking about, um, in the 70s, the movies didn't have a lot of CGI. So it right. had to be a lot of lighting. It had to be a lot of uh, suspense. It had to be a lot of startling things. They were It was like shot gritty and dirty kind of. Mm-hmm. Like when you look at a Rosemary's Baby, it's not a super scary movie. It's a super creepy movie. How it was actually the story, how the story unfolds, mm-hmm. and how the and, and you tell the stories, how you unfold the story, how you unpack it yeah. uh, in the seventies. Um, then you get to the eighties, and it's more. Well, we've got better graphics. We got better, uh, uh, not CGI, but better uh, makeup and stuff. So they get started mm-hmm. more to that. Now you can do whatever you want to do. So if you could marry the 70s style of storytelling with the mm-hmm. CGI and stuff they have now, you would probably have a really epic uh, horror film. And while you're on that subject, you look at, we will never, ever again, I don't think, have a film that affected people the way the exorcist affected people when that came out. Mm-hmm. I mean, you had women mm-hmm. screaming and leaving the theater. You had theaters yeah. pulling the film. I mean, this yeah. film was that scary that, you know, men were having heart attacks in the cinema. And yeah. like that's what this film did. And it's funny because as a 35 year old man watching the exorcist now, I have a whole different take on it as right. a father of three kids than I did when I watched it as a kid. You know, when right. I, when you watch this movie as a child, you're more looking at it through the eyes of a child. You're looking at it more through Linda Blair, through Reagan, because yes. that's what you know. You right. Know? But then right. as, an, as a parent, I'm looking at it from the parent's point. Because as a kid, you're like, fuck that girl. Get the fuck up. Burn the house yeah. down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, parents, you're like, I get it. I, you know, I, please save my baby girl. What do we have mm-hmm. to do mm-hmm. to get my baby back? Right. You know, so, Right. The Exorcist to me has two completely different levels of terror, and it's mm-hmm. the terror of the parent watching this happen to your child, mm-hmm. and the the fear of the child that's going through this. It's it's layered, man, and you mm-hmm. don't get that type of storytelling today. That's what mm-hmm. I was trying to get at. You were talking about that storytelling. You don't right. get stuff like that nowadays that go that deep into it because it's been done, and it's probably been right. done better than what we're planning on doing. Right, right. And that's the so, thing. You have to think how you how like I like telling a story where all the uh, characters have deep backstories and the audience will care and get invested in them. Um, that's the thing I always said about the best part of Game of Thrones was that every character, if they show up on the screen, you got a backstory and you have some relevance. And he would use that and say, "But you could die. Everybody is up for dying, and you 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 start." Getting attached to somebody, whoo, head comes flying yep. up. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, dude. That, that, that was that was and that, that was smart because it makes you not know who's going to live. And it, well, there's it makes no throwaway you characters. Tested. Right, right. Yep. There's no throwaway characters. And everybody's got some weight. Uh, yep. We're doing like our movie, um, A Wicked Breed. We, the whole concept of it is evil versus evil versus evil. And so, as an audience, I want you to choose which evil you're more in favor of. So it's like voting pretty much. Yes, <laughs> yes. Because each, so each character is, is fucked up in their own way, right? Each character, like, uh, it's these two brothers 
run a gas station and they use that gas station as a hunting ground with one of the guy's girlfriends. Mm-hmm. You come up, the car, they, they mess with your car. Next thing you know, you're, 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 well, slash your victim, right? Yeah. Then the other story that happens before that is the story starts in the 1800s. The story starts in the 1800s with a doctor email rose. Because back in the 1800s, they had this bullshit diagnosis for women called uh, hysteria. Okay. A uh, husband could say, My wife has hysteria and submit her to a mental institution. And it was just a generic diagnosis so that the husband could get rid of the wife. If one was over sexual or, or a daughter didn't listen to her, her uh, father or her husband, whatever, you could be diagnosed with hysteria and they put you in a mental institution. And women were tortured. Nothing was wrong with them. They were just tortured and mm-hmm. just abused. And in my research, I said, There's my part of my story. So a wicked breeze starts in the 1800s right. with this doctor who is the leading authority on hysteria. And you find out what he's doing is he's experimenting on these women to find a cure for his wife's disease. Mm. And See, I've, I've been married 15 years, man. So I get it. You said hysteria and they'll take her away. <laughs> yeah. H Y S. But that, that's so crazy to think, you know, but back then, you know, like you said, the 1800s, a woman was supposed to be submissive to her yep. husband. Like yep. once she's married, that's your property now. Yep. And if you don't listen, they will take you away because of hysteria. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, it's just, it's sad to think, you know, because we have come a long way. We still got a long ways to go, but right. it's sad to think that at one point she was his property Mm-hmm. And if she didn't do what he said to do, that's it. You're gone. Right. Yeah. Right. For just, one human being to treat another human being that way is some of the, and I guess because I'm 35, I, I just can't fathom treating anybody else that way as my property or as, you know, mm-hmm. you do what I say, or you're done. Like right. that's another human being right there that you're talking to. You know, I made right. jokes about it, but without my oh, wife, yeah. I'm, I'm I can't do shit. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, that's, that's the whole thing. When the story starts off, it starts off there, but he, he ends up in the first 15 minutes, uh, this tragedy happens in the house and the house becomes infested with the dead spirits of all the women that he killed. Mm-hmm. And, it's, and it jumps into the present. And you find that that house has become uh, cursed and haunted. And then the brothers and the uh that their that girl run into a couple that comes to the gas station and you find that couple is more dangerous than than they are Ooh, i like it the hunter yeah, becomes so the a, hunted oh right. yeah it's a, it's yeah, a there's, twist there's, yeah it's a huge twist and the thing is that like he uh the girl it's a it's a married couple that comes into their gas station and the one of the brothers he because we show early in the movie how they do their business and how they kill and hunt people. And the next people that come in the gas station is this couple. And the one brother whose name is John Boy, oh no, Trigger, Trigger, he, uh, he, the girl, the wife stands up to Trigger. And he's so offended by it and so turned on by it that he makes it a personal vendetta. He has to uh, get his revenge and hunt them. So he messes with their car and their car breaks down right in front of that house that has a curse on it. You end up having that dangerous couple, the, uh, the family that's like your slasher family in that cursed house and dealing with all the evil spirits and everything that's going on in that cursed house. And, and that, that's, that's Dark what, Iris, you said? No, that's, no, that's, uh, a, that's wicked a Wicked Breed. breed. Okay. It's so that's one of the ones that are in pre-production right now. Yep. Right. Right, yep. right. We have a trailer Man, for that already. Yeah, please send me all this stuff because I want to update everybody on when we can have availability on this. But you guys can check it out on their stuff too because I'm intrigued about this one too. This is something that, but I can't imagine. I'm I am in a house with three girls. I can't imagine a whole bunch of spirits and ghosts of women I've killed haunting me too. <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's, it's dope because they uh yeah, there's two sisters in it and the uh no oh god, it's yeah we we did a lot of stuff with the mother. And her disease, and uh, there's a lot of twists until the, the very, very, very end. It's gonna be like we still have to have three of them, right? Exactly. So it's gonna be good. 
So speaking of like haunted houses and, and spirits and stuff, have you uh, ever experienced uh, any type of supernatural at all? I, I have. Um, okay, so so have I. Yeah, yeah, it's one of those things where I haven't yeah. talked about it much, and I'll I'll yeah. share it with you guys in private. But yeah. it's just something that it, it blew me away, and it's something I, that I'll never forget as long as the, I live. The, the, the first time it happens, your brain doesn't process it, it, it because right. it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense exactly. at all. You're like, there's no way that that happened. Yeah. And yeah, you try to use you try to apply science to it. Right. And it doesn't science doesn't work. So, After we're so, done filming, I'll, I'll tell you guys the story. Like I said, I don't want to talk yeah. about that here, but I'll tell you guys. Oh, no, yeah, that, that's fine. So, yeah. so when, when Derek writes these these stories and he, he brings a little bit of, of that yeah, element into the stories, the people that maybe have experienced it or, or, you know, have heard about, they can relate just a little bit like, oh, OK, yeah, you know, I, I see yeah. that. You know, so we make oh, it yeah. we try to make it as believable as possible. Yeah, yeah, I that's and that because that always hits closer to home, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's something that you've gone through or something that's believable, it's something that intrigues you more and sucks yeah. you in a little bit more, right? Yep, absolutely, yeah. right. So, Jose, I want to bounce back to you real quick. We're sure. going back to Mr. Slauson's Lost Oasis here on Tourist Trap. Um, which <laughs> death from that movie affected you the most? Uh, I don't remember the girl's name, but he had her strapped, uh, chained to the table, and he was he was p- putting those little pieces of. Uh, the plaster on her face and he's talking to her and she's she's sitting there she's trying to breathe and then you got the guy that's handcuffed to the stairs and he's a q-tip of all things he's trying to pick the lock with a q-tip to save the girl and he puts that last piece of plaster over her her face and i mean she's suffocating she's trying to breathe she's convulsing on the table and i'm just like uh, and he's telling her he says you won't be able to breathe but you won't suffocate. Your heart will burst from fright before you lose consciousness. Uh, like, <laughs> damn, you're fucking dark, dude. <laughs> oh man, dude, that dude was—he was insane, man. He was—he oh, was dude. insane. Yeah, so yeah. scary. And and what sucks is like when you first start the movie, mm-hmm. you really want to believe he's a nice guy. Like you he do. seems like he's really a helpful yeah. guy, and maybe that he's not the you're watching. Like, there's no way this guy's yeah. cool, man. There's no way. And then you get to it, you're like, you cocksucker. I have faith <laughs> in you. you know what I, mean? like, I believed in you. <laughs> I believed in you. <laughs> were you supposed to be like this? <laughs> you know, I thought you were cool, but you're not. I'm taking this back. Ever again. <laughs> You're an animal. <laughs> right. What made sitting in a therapist office 20 years later? What's made you like this? Mr. Slauson. Mr. Mr. Slauson. Mr. Slauson. I wanted to trust him. Yeah, Dr. Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> right. Derek, real quick, I want to bounce back to you. Uh, when you think about the exorcist, what is your favorite scene from the exorcist? Oh, geez. I know it's such a hard movie to pick a favorite scene from because they're all so damn dark. I think it's gonna sound bad. I think <laughs> the old, the older priest dies, and how she just gets in his head, and she just she plays him like a fiddle, and yeah. then he has to uh, has to overcome because I, I like that in. Um, because the the demon that was inside her knew everything about him and about their weaknesses and where to strike. And I thought as demonic and how everything was and how scary it was, that was one of the things that was most critical to me was that it showed that, oh, I know everything about you. I know all your secrets. I know your weaknesses. I know the things that that you're afraid of and what you feel guilty about and everything Mm -hmm. else. Mm-hmm. And he had to overcome that, and I thought, and he and he's telling her when he's shaking her, wanting the uh, demon to go into her, to him, and mm-hmm. I mean, I thought, bitch, you still ain't safe. I say, you know, this thing took over you. <laughs> he just jumped right back in. <laughs> she, she, I, I was thought, I said, how are you gonna marry her? I mean, how are you gonna see her later? You be like, Mm-mm. yeah, um. I don't ever tell anybody this, but I was possessed as a child by a demon. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all want some pea soup? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, so, yeah, we, we talked about the first horror movie that you guys watched and what mm-hmm. how what they meant to you. But now right. I want to go scream on you guys here for a second. 
right. what's your favorite scary movie? Yeah. What is your favorite <laughs> horror movie? Let's start with you this time first, Derek. Okay, my favorite, favorite. I would say, because it was the first of its kind for me, I'd say the original Halloween. Because Very nice. That was the, it was simple. And that's the first time I saw some dude just go in the background and he gets up and then turns his head. And I'm like, Bitch, he's behind you. He's behind you. <laughs> <laughs> because that's the first time. Because well, what you said is, well, yeah. One thing I love about what you just said is how simple it is. Like with Nightmare yes. on Elm Street. Look, Nightmare on Elm Street, I think, is the best horror film ever made. That's oh, just my, my opinion. God. It's not my yes. favorite. Yeah, but, I yeah, think but it's, it's still. Um, because it's, but, it's, it gets you anywhere. Yes, and that's it. With with Freddy Krueger, he's a monster that gets you in your dreams. Mm -hmm. With Jason Voorhees, he's this demon almost that's come back. But mm -hmm. there's a scene in the original Halloween 78 when they pull Michael's mask off, and he's just a guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's just a normal, yeah. regular guy. And that makes it that much fucking scarier that this is just a normal, everyday, everyday looking dude that's right. just doing this to you, man. Like, that, that right. to me... They've all been scarier for their own reasons. Freddie, because you can't escape him. You got to fall asleep eventually. Jason, I think, was always more unique with his kills. He wouldn't just be stabby, stabby. You know, he would right. get you. He would beat you when you're in a tent. He would, yeah. you know, he would do whatever he had to do. But Michael was the scariest for me because he was just a guy. It, right. The most realistic. He's just a guy that went crazy and wants to kill you. That's have, it. Have you ever, they know what, uh, good trivia questions. People always think that uh, Jason was the killer in all those movies. And they forget his mother was the actual original killer of everybody. Mm -hmm. yep. Oh, Crystal trust Lake. me. Daddy knows all about <laughs> Camp Crystal Lake. <laughs> like, Mrs. Voorhees, man, yeah. and she... What? It's funny, because you don't have to watch that movie now. It doesn't hold up as well. The story is still good, no. but, like, the kills, they're all off-screen or below-screen, but right. that right. movie started something. You know, right. I mean, Halloween 78 really started it. And then Victor Miller, the creator of Friday the 13th, I was so blessed to be able to have him on this podcast as well. Oh, wow. And he told me the same wow. thing. He said, you know, without Halloween, there would never have been Friday the 13th. Mm -hmm. But, right. man, what Friday the 13th did started a whole new, like, like just a whole new wave of young slasher that came mm -hmm. out directly after Friday the 13th. And it, that, to me, is my favorites as well. I, I think, like I said, the best horror film ever made is A Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, but scary. Friday the 13th, I think, is one of my favorite franchises just because of Jason. He's such a badass. And yeah. without part one, you know, obviously you see Jason pop out of the water at the end in one of the most, you know, one of the best jump scares of all time. Right, 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 but, right. Man, these movies are just so... It's so fun to go back and talk about these movies that mm -hmm. affected us as kids. See, oh, now, yeah. Derek, you got unlucky here because I asked you first to put you on the spot. Jose's had a second to think about it, but let's go back there, Jose. What's your favorite scary movie? Your uh, favorite gonna, horror movie, my friend. I'm, I'm going to concur with Derek because uh, uh, 78 was my, my favorite. Um, I, I'm a huge Michael Myers fan. I, I think he's by far the best villain, uh, in my opinion. I just look. Yeah, there you go. Something yes. about that that mask. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that mask is you. just. It's just. It, 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 it was the right just way. A, right. And this right it here is actually the Mister Slauson version. Right. Um, <laughs> <the Michael Myers. laughs> and and to think when Derek was talking about it was so simple, uh, how they made that came up with that mask. It was a Will uh, Shatner uh, Will mask. Shatner. Uh, yeah, for uh, from Star Trek. And they needed a mask, so what they did is they went to the uh, local Halloween store and just got this mask and painted it white, you know, because they were like, oh, okay, that's scary enough. Um, and I like I like Halloween for a couple different reasons, and uh, one of them is close and personal to I-71, and I'll get to that in a minute. But the uh, the first reason is, is uh, Michael Myers, his backstory from when you find out he's a troubled little boy that kills his sister, like murders his sister, you find out that this kid is a psychopath. And that, that whole backstory of Dr. Loomis trying to, you know, rehabilitate him, trying to reach him. Uh, and then he says he, you know, the, he has the, uh, the, uh, the darkest eyes, the devil's eyes. And you like, right then, you know, like this dude, even though he took that mask off, there's something not right with this man. There's something not right with him. See, and, and then Halloween started a great franchise too. I'm a huge fan yeah. of Halloween three. Yeah. 
you know, so for <laughs> Shamrock, yeah. that's my shit. Yeah, so, yeah, the Shamrock. Yeah, Halloween is just so head. amazing, man. <laughs> uh, the second reason why uh, Halloween is so near and dear to my heart is because uh, it started off kind of in the in the same position where I-71 is because when they brought it, uh, when John Carpenter uh, brought this to the Hollywood executives, uh, you know, there's he's like, well, you know, this is a, a horror film. How much do you need for it? And he was $300,000. They were going to pass on it. Because it was so low budget. And this is 70, you know, 77, I think it was like 75 when they first pitched it. Um, and they were like, even at that time, anything under a million dollars was considered low budget. No name actors except for uh, Donald Pleasance. And he was on his way out. He was, he was right. trying to retire. And they were like, well, okay, if he signs on. So Donald Pleasance signed on. So they did it for $300,000. I assume you in movies, we can do big budget films for under that and so i'm just like if they can do it we can do it you know if they yeah. can get a chance we can get a chance so uh that that's that's why it's one of my my favorite movies and you know it's like i, I just love that because they took that idea and they had all the naysayers and look what it turned out today i mean it is it's massive you know well, I mean, uh, a movie i forget even, about is a thing but e that even people that yeah. don't know They've never seen Halloween. They know the theme song. That's how iconic yep. even the score yeah. to this movie is. Yep. Yeah. You tell me one Halloween that you've gone trick or treating and didn't hear that piano lick, and I'll call you a fucking liar right to <laughs> your <Yeah>. face. Exactly. <laughs> you know, like that, that the Ghostbusters song. You hear those every Halloween. Yeah. Right? Because that, they're iconic. The Jaws theme. Yep. You know, like yeah. Da, yep. da, da, da. And I believe you just brought up the thing, Derek. Yeah. yeah. Yep. To me, and this is something I've said my whole life, the top three in no particular order movies, if you ever want to learn how to do practical effects the right way with no CGI, you go and you watch A Nightmare on Elm Street. Yep. You mm -hmm. watch An American Werewolf in London. Yes. Oh, you watch I, the thing. Yeah. I've been yep. trying to remember that for a week now, brother, because I'm telling you, I was like, what was my movie? Yeah. What was my movie? It was American Werewolf in London because it took humor and it also turned it on its side and made it horrifying. He turned, he turned into a werewolf right in front of you. Mm -hmm. Which, I, I was just going to say, I will pay somebody right now. If you can show me a better practically effect werewolf transition, I will send you $50 right now. If you can show me a better practically done werewolf transition than the one in American Werewolf in London where his nose is coming out and his hand, yeah. ah, and and his hand grows. Big. Yeah, he's, all, he's all slimy and everything. He goes all and fours it's and his back. Oh, my God. It is fucking Oh, so amazing! What again? One of my—that's one in my top five favorite movies of all time, not just horror, yeah. because yeah, it's funny, it's scary, it's mm -hmm. heartbreaking, it's yep. a love story. Like it has yep. everything, man. I love American Werewolf in London. It's just—it's such a great, great movie. Oh yeah, he's sitting in the uh, in the movie theater with the people he's killed, his best friend talking to him. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and I, what, yeah. what I love about this movie is the attention to detail. Like as the movie goes on, he decays more and more and more. Yes. You know, it's it's like he's deteriorating along with David's mind. Like as right. he's yes. going. Jack, so is David. Like, and right. as he's go like, he's he's not just like a ghost. He's like right. literally a zombie that no one else can see because he's constantly getting worse and worse looking. Yes, yeah. You know? yeah, and it's just it's brilliant. It's so brilliant. He's not just standing there, a normal guy. And every time you see him, he looks worse and worse and worse and more mm -hmm. deteriorated than he did the last time. Yep. And it's those little attention to details that may take a film from being great to being a fucking masterpiece to me. Right, right. These right. are little exactly. things that you can do to make your film go from yes to fuck yes. Yes. You know? <laughs> yes. Now, so, have you, we got have one you more seen... question for you guys yeah, yeah, before yeah. we go. We always end this, my friends, with a skull count. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to your first horror movies. D uh, Derek, yours being The Exorcist. Jose, yours being Tourist Trap. And we're going to rank them zero to five skulls. Zero being the worst five being the best but there's a catch we're yeah. not being critics here we're not ranking on how great the movie did how the production was how the acting was we're ranking just strictly on what this movie means to you and how this movie affected you so let's start with you first this time derek zero to five skulls what would your ranking of the exorcist be oh that's five skulls because be. if it if, if you i'm a grown-ass man if i'm going back to a child that still fucks me up 
you get five skulls. That movie it. has, it's just, it makes, because people, we got, you talking about Lucifer and satanic shit, you just don't know. You just don't know. And, uh, yeah, no, that's five skulls. Five. I'm 35 years old. When I see a little girl in a white dress, I'll punt the shit out of her. I'll walk to the other side of the street. I ain't walking by her. <laughs> you see, you got a little girl in a white dress, I'm done. Yeah, you know? yeah. I'll walk up to her with my... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm done. Little girls in white dresses, that is it for me. That's a wrap. Oh, I'm more yeah, scared totally. than anything. So uh, let's pop it over to you, Jose. Taurus Trap, Mr. Slousens. What is yeah. your ranking zero to five skulls, my friend? Dude, I'm gonna have to go with five skulls, man, because I think that movie was really ahead of its time. Mm-hmm. Um it, with the uh, telekinesis and then the just the story of him uh turning those uh Taurus into mannequins. It, it's just like for, for one, it's like, why? It doesn't make sense. But for two, it's just like so scary because you don't want to be that next victim because of what's going to happen to you. You know what's going to happen. <laughs> You're going to suffocate to death. But your first heart's going to stop you. first but before you can suffocate. Yeah, your heart's going to stop first. <laughs> Ruben, so, you know, like, I want to thank you. <laughs> yeah, I want to thank you guys so much for coming on. This has meant the world to me. Don't go anywhere. I got a couple more questions for you. Everybody else, sure. I want to throw that reminder out there again. These guys are busting their asses, and especially during a time of COVID where we need entertainment more now than ever because we're running out of shit to watch on Netflix. We're running out of shit to watch on Hulu, Amazon Prime, not YouTube. I have a whole playlist of stuff you can watch right over here, but we're running out of stuff. So make sure you're clicking the links down here, I-71 Productions, I-71 Video. Make sure you guys are checking these guys out because they are fucking awesome, and I'm so excited to work with these guys more in the future. So everybody, I'm Ken Sledge. Keep talking horror, stay what you are, and we'll see you guys soon.